Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Wave Studios and brought to you by official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international war ring author, Mia Molson's The Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and book. We're here with the terrific lady who began her singing career at an internet supper, supper club in Paris. She performed at various jazz fests, including the Mosique uh, Festival, the Festival Jazz Au Chateau in uh, France, along with uh, Telluride and San Jose here in the States, and also performed with LA's top jazz musicians like um, Chris, um, Harry Franklin, also Sam Hirsch, uh, Jack LaCompte, and a lot more, and also has a new album with a collection of original song covers, and uh, speaking the truth of life, and what are they? It's the truth be told, and uh, currently 15 on the Jazz Week charts. Live, ladies and gentlemen, plus studios in beautiful downtown Los Angeles, the amazing uh, multi-talented uh, singer, and you could say kind of like um, a truth be told writer who got her started in Paris, make her way to Los Angeles, Ladies and gentlemen, truth be told, multi-talented Angie Wells. Angie, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Mike. Uh, I just want to clear up one thing. Okay. I, you know, I, the album made it to number 15 on the charts. We're not at 15 at this current time because the album's been out for a while. But yes, we did make it up to 15 on the charts. We like to surprise people too. So we're going to do that too. So we have that. So, <laughs> so uh, all right. Anyway, so, um, so basically it's uh, truth be told, uh, Currently 15 on the Jazz World Charts. Uh, you began singing career at an intimate supper club in Paris. You also performed at various jazz fests, including the um, Mosique uh, Festival. I hope I got that right. Festival Jazz Au Chateau and also Telluride in San Jose. You performed with a number of uh, jazz musicians in Los Angeles, like Christian Newman, Harry, Henry Franklin, Sam Hirsch, Jack LaCompte, and more. And you also have a new album, a collection of original songs, and also cover tunes uh, speaking the truth of life. And truth be told... Number 15 on the Jazz Week charts. Before getting all that, Angie, tell us how you first got started. Well, you know, I always had a, a love for jazz, and I got that from my dad. Mm -hmm. basically. But uh, the the start for singing, you know, as a child, I sang in church, um, in the church choir. Uh, but as far as jazz is concerned, you know, it was something that I just enjoyed the music. And uh, I was in Paris visiting a friend. Um, and, uh, we had gone to a jazz supper club for dinner. And so, um, she said to me, she said, so, you know, I let the musicians know that you're here and they want you to come up and, and do a couple numbers with them. And that's actually kind of how it all started. Oh Seems my goodness. Simple. It was just that simple. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't happen to call what were you singing at the time, were you? I don't, I think maybe I sang Route 66. And I don't remember the other so song. I think I sang two or three songs that night. It was all kind of a blur, really. <laughs> <laughs> I still remember the new Route 66 Nat King Cole version. I wish I was on that right now as we speak. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we got that. And and also, um, what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career? Hmm. One precise moment. Well... I'm not sure there's one precise moment. I think there it was sort of a, uh, a a mixture of several moments kind of coming together. You know, the fact that, uh, you know, I, I would spend Sundays listening to jazz and blues with my dad most of the afternoon. And then when I was five, um, Count Basie came to my uh, kindergarten school, came to my school where I went, it was a kindergarten associated with, it was a parochial uh, kindergarten associated with a church in Philadelphia. Wow. And, uh, he played for a bunch of little kids. That's the kind of person he was. They say he really loved children. And I think you could, we could feel that. And he really seemed to enjoy playing for us. And that, you know, sort of got the swing thing going for me because, you know, he was the ultimate swinger as far as music, <laughs> <point. laughs> music swing. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. You're right. <laughs> yeah, you have to clarify that. Um, and, uh, you know, and my parents, my mom would take me to, um, we had a, a sort of an equivalent of, of sort of our Hollywood Bowl in Philadelphia was called at the time the Dell and mm. uh, they would have a jazz series in the summer and we would go every year. So I just had this love of the music and I think just all of that kind of coming together is sort of what pointed me in this direction. Hmm. That certainly does. And uh, who are some of your favorite jazz artists, singers, and uh, musicians growing up? Oh, well, uh, of course, I love Count Basie, <laughs> um, Sarah Vaughn, uh, Anita O'Day, Carmen McRae. Um, there was a woman who I actually just discovered 
a couple of years ago and you know she didn't necessarily influence me as a child but she she's definitely sort of influenced uh, i mean her name is Lorez alexandria um, she was an amazing uh, vocalist as well um and it, as far as musicians go gosh you know there's there's tons ramsey lewis um oh gosh i mean i could just go on well I and mean, then i love the blues too so bb king um mm -hmm. Les McCann. I mean, it's just it could go on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, I can uh, imagine it right now too. And um, and of course, how about your thoughts on Miles Davis, especially Bitches Brew? Well, you know, there's no one like Miles. There was, and there won't ever be anybody like Miles. And he was definitely um, he was a visionary. You know, he was. Uh, I feel like always at the cutting edge he was always right there at the beginning or either starting the new um he just was very innovative and um you know his work is incomparable I mean, it's, and it's it still influences many jazz musicians today mm -hmm. and, and of course you're becoming an influence as well too with the uh, truth be told uh Currently number 15 in the Jazz Week charts. You also have the title track. Uh, There's always a uh, time for loving. Do I do I more you move you and everything else? We'll talk about that along with some of your works with Angie Davis. But first, you listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. If you're looking for a professional website without breaking a budget, Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs at below the competition web. Call today, 1-800-303-3960 and mention the Mike Widener Show and get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give an official shout out to our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, international war ring author, Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, you love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target. Where truth and illusion, and those you love be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has gotten great reviews. An evil of an enjoys by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and many else. So grab your copy today for goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com or for 40 podcast platforms heard in 100 countries, including Facebook, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Anchor FM, Apple Music, iTunes, Google Play, and more. And follow us on YouTube, BitChute, and Rumble. Take us with you on any mobile device. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Weiner Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies. Makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com. Check out the Mike Weiner Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas like T-shirts, pop sockets, phone cases, hoodies, and great books like Missing Once and Wrinkles. Amazon.com slash me and Molson Zia. Check it out today and support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, and the Mike Widener Show.com. We're here with a wonderful lady who began her singing career and intimate supper club in Paris on the Mike Widener Show. Performed a number of jazz fests, um, Mosique uh, Festival, Festival Jazz Au Chateau, Telluride, San Jose with Angie Wells. And, um, and of course, she also got the uh, album Truth Be Told, which is currently number 15 on the Jazz Week charts. Before we talk about that, and um, and of course, you performed a number of them. Uh, what was your favorite fest that you uh, enjoyed? What what uh, made it stand out about it? I'd have to say I kind of love all jazz festivals. They're always fun because you know they're usually outdoor in the summer, which is great. Um, I should say summer types of festivals. I, I love them all. I mean, they're all fun, but I do enjoy working summer festivals. Festival Mosaic was wonderful. Um, it's a large outdoor festival. Um, San Jose. Jazz Summerfest is was great. I mean, I I think for me, you know, it's it's sort of hard to pick favorites because I enjoy them all. I mean, it's they're they're all wonderful and fun to do. So it's kind of it's kind of tough to say. Well, this one's more fun, or none of them are more fun. They're all lots of fun for me, and I enjoy them all. Mm -hmm. And certainly did indeed too. And you also perform with a number of top jazz musicians in Los Angeles, like um. Chris, Christian Newman, Henry Franklin, Sam Hurst, Jack LeCompte, the list goes on and on and on. And, uh, you know, tell us about some of the musicians and uh, what was it like, um, you know, working on different styles and how you came together and everything like that. I mean, you got a, a great list of them. Oh, well, thank you. Well, you know, I've been really fortunate um, 
Los Angeles does have a lot of good, you know, jazz musicians. And um, I sort of got myself, uh, you know, out there doing jam sessions in the beginning, just to try to get around and to meet people and to connect with different musicians, which was at that time when, when I was first starting in LA, it, we had a lot more jam sessions and things happening. I, I think it's a bit slower now in all honesty. Um, but at that time you could meet a lot of these people um, at really good jam sessions, or I would go to shows that I, you know, of, of musicians that I like, and I'd introduce myself to them. But I met a lot of people through jam sessions. Sam Hirsch, I met literally, he was right out of school um, at a jam session, and he's an amazing pianist. And uh, I started hiring him, you know, right away. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Henry Franklin, I believe I was introduced to him at a jazz festival, and, you know, we connected. Um, John Clayton, who produced my album, he and I met uh, at at a show at another jazz uh, musician's show and uh, connected. Um, Josh Nelson, who is my sort of main uh, pianist that I, you know, hire a lot of times in L.A. Uh, he used to be Natalie Cole's pianist. Mm -hmm. uh, Josh is very busy and everybody loves him. He's an amazing pianist, arranger. Um he, uh, I, I, I really can't even remember how I was introduced to him now that I think about it, but um, <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, we just sort of, you know, you meet so many people in so many different environments. Sometimes I meet people at parties. Um, so yeah, a lot of the people have been, you know, sort of met them in sort of casual environments and uh, you just connect and, you know, if someone sort of re recommends you or refers you. And sometimes I would be referred to other musicians. It's like, oh, well, I, you know, I need a trumpet player or whatever. Do you, who do you think would be good for me? And I call somebody that I knew and they would refer me. So a lot of it is, you know, based on relationships and you, you meet people through referrals and, and, uh, you know, at different events. It's, mm -hmm. it's and a lot of networking and, uh, online and just about everything right. virtual in person and all that, which is great. And you have a nice collection of, um, artists and musicians that you have and speaking of collections you got the new album which is a collection of original songs and covers which speaks the truth of life which is uh truth be told number 15 on the jazz week charts and uh you know tell us more about that and uh you know what inspired you to uh do the album and especially what inspired you to like you know speaking the truth of life i'm sorry please repeat that i missed i missed part of the question i'm sorry oh i'm sorry um uh, the um the new album which is a collection of original songs and covers uh speaking the truth of life and uh tell us more about truth be told and um what inspired to do the album especially speaking the truth of life well well yeah so you know the summer of 2020 when we were all home unfortunately you know with the the shutdown happening for uh COVID, and uh and uh you know, the the unfortunate murder of, you know, George Floyd on television uh, definitely uh, inspired me to write this album. Um, mm. What what basically happened was, uh, you know, a couple days or weeks after the event, I, I was out, you know, riding in my car and I could just sort of thinking about what had happened and this melody just started to come to me. And it, it literally did. I felt like it rose from the inside. I could hear it. I could hear the melody and the words started to come and, you know, the song just kind of came together on its own. Um, and that basically is the, the, the title track, Truth Be Told. Um, once I sort of finished that song, I felt like I really needed to, I wanted to do an album. I wanted to, do an album which spoke to the many truths of life, be it sadness, happiness, love, family, joy, spirituality. These are the things that we all have to, no matter who we are, most of us want love. Most of us have at some point, unfortunately, experienced heartbreak. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we have family that we love. Uh, you know, we have things that make us happy. Um, and then we try to think positive about things. So it was just uh, sort of me pulling together uh, different, I guess, aspects of my life that I felt were also things that I would have in common with many other people. Because the reality is, you know, unfortunately, what's what's happening is it it seems that we, we seem to be really focused on 
um, the differences. And um, we seem to have forgotten where we can work together and mm -hmm. what things we have in common together. Um, so I just felt it was it was time to speak out um, about some of the things that were disturbing as well as some of the things that were wonderful. Mm -hmm. it, it seems like the common ground thing has been pretty much, um, you know, just just lost in time. You know, it's it's it can be as common as pizza, your favorite sports team and everything like that. And, um, you know, I, I talked to somebody about that, about how we lose common ground. And of course, the big suggestion is it's pizza or drink and everything like that. It's like, you know, what kind of happened to it? Yeah. Yeah. We, I, I, I feel we've kind of we lost our way a little bit. So I'm hoping, you know, we find our way back to mm -hmm. realizing that we're all humans and um, trying to treat each other as humans and not as, or just focusing in on one aspect of a person that maybe you don't agree with or whatever. But um, yeah, I just feel like we, we, we kind of have lost our, our way of thinking of the things that we have in common. Mm -hmm. Right. And also too, more on the album, uh, Truth Be Told, which is currently 15 on the jazz week charts. You also have, there's always time for loving, do I move you and Nick a time? And you can uh, tell us about those. And if there's other songs you want to talk about more from the album specifically, feel free to do so. Well, I definitely like to talk about the, there's always time for loving. Um, that's an original also, you know, that I, I wrote. And basically that song speaks to the fact that, you know, we're all really very busy. Many of us are, you know, most of the time you're not even doing one thing at a time. A lot of times you're doing two things at once. We're multitasking a lot. It's just sort of the way life goes. And I just sort of wanted to, you know, bring attention to the fact that even though we have all of this going on and we're all a lot of times overwhelmed with the many things that we have to do, we have to make time for love. It's really important. And so that was one of the things that I I, I really wanted to you know, speak about uh, on the album. So that, that hence, you know, writing that song, there's always time for loving. Um, the other tune that I, I is really, really very close to my heart is where the living is good. And I wrote that song um, because of all the people that I see who are homeless, who are living in tents or fabric shelters that they have built or cardboard boxes or, you know, whatever it is, the homeless mm. crisis is really, it's out of control. And, you know, as a human being who cares about other human beings, seeing someone, you know, without a real home, without a real place to sleep, it hurts me. It actually, it really, it, it hurts my heart. Um, and it sometimes makes me cry because, you know, I, I, I can't just gather that person up and take them to a house. I, I don't have that option, but I felt I wanted to bring attention to the fact that we have so many homeless people in our country. And, um, you know, a lot of them, the, the, the irony of the song where the living is good is that you know, there's a lot of wealthy neighborhoods in, you know, various towns uh, where it, it, in one instance, somebody could be living in a very luxurious apartment building or a very luxurious home, but then maybe, you know, 50 feet from the front door is some person living in a tent. Mm. So it's, we're all in close proximity to this. It's not something anymore that is far away and, you know, you don't see it. It's all over. Mm -hmm. And I just felt it was really important to bring attention to that. Mm -hmm. It could also happen in the backyard. Somebody could sneak in a garage. And that was one point, too. There were so many houses up for sale that homeless people actually broke in and started living in there. And there was also an article I read, too, about, um, you know, people living in, um, you know, RVs where it's like, you know, it's run by landlords that, um, you know, a guy would buy an yes. RV or, you know, just line them up and, re and rent them for 450. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's a trend that's going like, you know, up and up, too. Yes, it is. And we have a lot of those sections kind of in LA, you'll see some streets that are just, it's, you know, the whole block is RVs, but not, not in great, you know, they're not great RVs. They're, you know, obviously have seen better days, but mm -hmm. I, I suppose if you, if that's the only option you can afford for shelter, 
you know, it's it's unfortunate, but there's there was I know there was a story I had heard about that there was someone kind of taking advantage of people with these vans that they were renting out. So, yeah, it's um it's a really unfortunate situation, and um you know I I feel in this country there really is no excuse for anybody to be hungry or not have a home because we have so much wealth, but it's up here and it's just a few people who have a lot of it. It's squeezing the middle of us. And those of us in the middle are hanging on. And then we have a bunch of people who have nothing, which is, it just seems like it's, it's wrong and it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. And it's also disproportionate as well too. even people yes. working full time that are living in uh, places like these. Now, now, assuming if you if you're elected mayor, like say if you're in Los Angeles or if you want to like say Phoenix, New York, Dallas or anywhere like that or even Kansas City and there's a huge homeless problem. What would you what would you do to solve it? Well, you know, the thing is, I don't I don't one of the things I think is that, you know, things were deregulated in the 80s. Um, and we turned a lot of, I won't say we, because I didn't have a part in it. And I certainly wouldn't have um, been in agreement with that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, a lot of homeless people were taken out of halfway house, I'm sorry, mentally ill people were taken out of halfway houses and uh, facilities that care for them. And I understand that there, there may have been things that needed to be fixed, but I don't think we needed to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Right. So now a lot of the people who are on the streets are people who are mentally ill. They don't have access to medication, which doesn't help them. Um, and so, you know, you can't force them to go in because of the laws. So if you don't treat that problem, you're definitely not going to be able to fix the other because if they are not able to function because they're not on the medication that they need um, and because they are not maybe getting the assistance that they need, then where are they going to live? If there's someone who is schizophrenic and you're terrified for your life to be around them when they're in that state, you're certainly not going to rent an apartment to those people. So, you know, it's, um, I think maybe the, the mental illness challenge needs to be handled first. Um, now, mind you, this is just in my world. I can't say that this would work, but this is just my thinking, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I would handle that problem. And then for those who were not uh, mentally ill and who were, you know, you know, struggling to try to make it. People who are, like you said, sometimes working two or three jobs and they can barely pay rent. Um, I think we would need to have affordable housing. The reality is, is that rents are out of control. All over oh the my gosh. I mean, out of control. They're building all these new buildings and all these wonderful new apartment buildings. And you find out the rents are 5,000 a month, 4,000 a month. Six, who, who, are, who's, who are all these people who can afford this? Mm. So I just feel like we've sort of lost our way. So we need to have real affordable housing and people need to be able to make a living wage. Now, let's face it. Really, if you think about it, I don't even know if $15 an hour is a living wage these days when mm -hmm. rents are thousands of dollars a month mm -hmm. and food costs what it costs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, I, I don't, I feel that, you know, we've got people who are at the top of companies who are making, you know, a hundred million dollars for a year, but then you have, you know, John over here, who's working three jobs, making maybe, you know, 15 an hour on one and 12 an hour on another and whatever he can get on something else. Who needs, not saying that if you, I, I do believe that you have the right to make money. Trust me, I'm not one of those people who thinks that, you know, you don't have the right to, to have money or to, or to be wealthy. But I do think there's sort of such a, a disparity at this point that something needs to be dealt with with that as well. So I think that, like I said, the first thing I would do would be to try to deal with the mental illness uh, crisis with homelessness, and then to try to, you know, make affordable housing and to help people get a living wage. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly Dean. And of course you can all do that in a nick of time, just like uh, one of your songs from the album. Yeah. Nick of time that, you know, Bonnie Raitt. Uh, I've always loved that song. I, I've always liked her as an artist as well.
And uh, I feel that that song was, it's uh, its something that I think a lot of us can deal with or, or can relate to the fact of, you know, we, we feel like at some point we might run out of time. You know, we're getting older, things are changing, and there's certain things you want to do um, that you want to accomplish, but you also know that time is not infinite. So um, yeah, that was, uh, it was nice to sort of redo that song. It was one of my favorites and I, I'm really uh, happy to have uh, redone it. Mm -hmm. That's just one of the many cover songs and uh, truth be told, currently 15 on the uh, Jazz We Charts with uh, Angie Wellesley on the Mike Wagner Show. You also had a previous one too, which is called Love and Mischief. You featured uh, She Ain't That Kind of Girl and um, Peel Me a Grape. I like that one. And how about One Mint Julep? You can tell us about that. It's like, I'm, I'm kind of hungry for those uh, last two right there. Oh, one minute, Joel. <laughs> yeah, that's an oldie, but a goodie one. It's, it's one of those kind of, you know, funny lyric songs. Uh, you know, there there were songs that uh, have a little bit of a humor to them. And, and basically, you know, it's the story of this this woman who you know, stops in a tavern and or, or bar and uh, decides to have this drink. And she has this one mint julep and it uh, goes to her head and, and gets her in uh, some situations but, <laughs> but, but in a in a fun way not in an abusive or harm right way. yeah yeah it made really me think maybe think of louis armstrong when he, when he talks about the mint juleps it's like he makes them so fun it's like i've been wanting to have one along with trying to peel a grape too so <laughs> Yeah, peel me a grape is a another fun tune. It's um, I sort of teased my husband and say that's my theme song. It's the high maintenance girls, uh, theme song. Peel me a grape. <laughs> um, Dave Frischberg wrote that, and I think one of the the uh, versions that a lot of people know was uh by uh, Blossom Deary. Um, you know, she was one of the first people to to do the tune, and uh, I, I I've always enjoyed it. <laughs> and, so, and certainly a lot of fun and right for those mint juleps and while peeling grapes as well in the meantime where can we find all your music at especially uh truth be told at angie well you know if you uh, want uh the option for streaming or, or downloading digital files you can all, always go to uh apple music spotify all of the you know normal amazon all of the normal digital platforms and then if you would like to uh, purchase a disc you can actually go on my website at uh, www.angiewellsmusic.com um, and you can purchase there. We'll certainly check that out. What's coming up for Angie Wells in 2023? We'll find out just one minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com, powered by SonicWave Studios, and brought to you by official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author, me and Molson Zia Missing. We'll be back with the multi-talented uh, singer Angie Wells after this time. We're back with the multi-talented singer Angie Wells with um, talks about Truth Be Told, currently number 15 in the Jazz Week charts here on the Mike Wagner Show. And we'll be cover a lot of ground regarding jazz, a bit of blues and everything else. And what else can we expect from 2023 and beyond, Angie? Well, 2023 uh, and beyond. It's 2023 now. <laughs> it's so funny. I was thinking, well, next year, no, that's 2024. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll have some, you know, I'll be doing some live shows, of course, you know, through the through the end of the year. Um, and I, I'm also still writing, you know, writing more music and probably going to try to get ready to do something, you know, in 2024 as well with an album. But uh, I'd like to get out and do more touring uh, around the country and 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 get to uh, connect with uh, more audiences in the states. Um, I do plan on going back to Europe probably next summer. So yeah, it's gonna be the you know the normal the normal musician thing of touring and uh, having shows and and continue to record and and work with other musicians. Mm, and certainly checking out as well too. We're looking forward to that. And who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Well, you know, I would say right now, because it's not one person, it's definitely they're at different places in my career. They've been, there've been different people. Um, but I think, you know, right now, I would say it's been John Clayton, uh, you know, my, the, he produced the album. He's been my mentor for many, many years. Um, and I feel like, you know, his guidance has been a great influence and I definitely feel like his guidance is um, has, has helped this album to get the recognition 
um, that it's gotten because he's a wonderful producer and he really knew how to pull the best out of all of us. Every musician, the vocalist, um, John really knew how to get the best work out of us. And uh, I really feel that at this point, he is right now uh, my greatest influence. And certainly indeed as well too. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? I would say don't give up on your dreams. Um, if you have a dream, um, don't worry about it being too late to start. Um, go out and start it. Um, and one of the things I suggest is if there's anything that you want to want to do that you haven't done before, um, get a mentor. Find someone that you admire their work, um, you admire their vision, reach out to them and you know let them know what your goals are. Be specific in your goals mm. because people can't help you if you don't know what you need help with. You can't be too um, general, you're right. You can't be too general, right? You need to be pretty specific about what your goals and desires are. Um, and then that way they'll know if they can help you or not. Mm. Um, but I definitely suggest getting a mentor. I think it's it's helped me in so many ways at so many different times in all of my careers having mentors has been really valuable and that's so important as well too we encourage everybody to get mentors as well it's a really good time to do so we're here with the uh multi-talented singer and amazing angie well with truth be told here on the mike wagner show angie a very big thank you for your time you've been absolutely fantastic looking forward to having you again soon keep us up to date keep in touch love having you back once again what's your website how do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your works? Uh, my website is www.angiewellsmusic.com. Um, and you can find my music there. You can find tour dates and all of that information. Um, as far as uh, downloading, of course, you can go on Apple, uh, Spotify, uh, 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 Amazon, all of the, the regular suspects. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the usuals. I have to keep that in suspects. mind. Just go after the suspects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Angie, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely amazing. Looking forward to having you again soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. Love having you back. Wish y'all best. And Angie, you definitely have a great future ahead of you. Thank you so much, Mike. Thanks for having me.